says will die for John Maverick, John Hillary. There he is. And I want to thank everybody here from me, especially uh, Brandon has got news to make everything possible to have the venue here. It's an awesome venue. Um, Brandon, thank you very much. I really appreciate uh, what you've done as well. Also, a special uh, thank you to Nikki and Old Vintage uh, Motorbike Club that helped uh, get the bike with the last final stages to get it 100% running. And um, yeah, I just want to give a little bit of a life story about how John, uh, how we are connected. Well, John, uh, his parents immigrated to South Africa many years ago and uh, by the way, his dad used to race uh, TT Isle of Man as well. Anyway, John, got, John was seven years of age, I was six years of age when we got to know each other. In primary school, Petersburg, Capricorn. We've got a long way together. And, uh, sorry, I'm not uh, big into speeches. I made a bit of a, so just relax, uh, hold on a second. Um, yeah, his parents worked about a block away from where I lived, Thomas Transport. His father was that time a diesel mechanic, his mother was running the stores. So often he was at our house, we visited his parents at the workshop. Then later his father bought a little red bulldozer, a little TD9 I remember. We used to push farm dams on weekends, go and myself used to go out to the farms, camp there, play clay lot. I don't know, I'm sure you guys all remember clay lot. No? Uh, yeah, and that's how we went through life. Um, his dad was actually known as Mr. McKeppy, so everybody knew him as McKeppy, like Joe's wearing now at the moment. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we. Uh, hold on a second, one moment, where am I? Uh, <laughs> yes, Joe's got uh, two brothers. Uh, uh, his older brother was Ed, his younger brother was Robert, and his sister was Susan. And at the age of about 14, am I right? That's when your dad bought you the chat bike. Somewhere around there. Yeah. Somewhere around there, yeah. And Joe used to ride it. His brother then over revved it. Uh, then his dad ordered a new piston, uh, stripped the bike down, imported a piston from uh, the UK, but his father was quite busy because he started his own business, Hillary Construction. So there wasn't really much time to rebuild the bike. And uh, you know, construction with the family, all, everybody got involved. Very successful business still today. And Joe was also very busy. Unfortunately, his health got him, got hold of him a little bit. And then two years ago, I decided to go. And Joe always wanted to restore the bike. Two years ago, I went to go and fetch the bike in Petersburg, and I said, "Give me a chance." And we put it together. But the spears that were missing, thanks to everybody that helped towards it. And uh, yeah, in 1971, we finished school. I worked for Hillary Construction in Ellis Rust till my, all my papers were in order. I went to Germany, done my apprenticeship there. Went to Renault for six months, then I rented a petrol station in uh, Archip in Munich. Uh, a few years later, Joe came over with a couple of friends, uh, with two other friends. They stayed a couple of months. Joe ended up staying a whole year in Germany. We also had a double-decker bus uh, that we rented out to Byford's clothing company. But uh, we had no papers. We didn't have a driver. Uh, Joe happened to be there at the right time. I said to Joe, you got a British passport? If the cops stop you, just show your South African ID book with your thing where they wrote down Donk Bastille. They won't be able to read it. The cops did stop him, they didn't pick it up, it was Dr. Bastier, license suspended. <laughs> and for three weeks he toured Germany with his double-decker bus. No? And we had a lot of fun together, we had a, I had a boat that time in Italy, we used to go down sometimes on you know, every second weekend down to Italy, it was 550 kilometers away. Uh, one day we came off, the, we left early on a Saturday morning, Went through the toll gates, there was a combi standing there. This guy flagged us down, almost in tears. Nobody wants to help me, please help, help, help. I went to the back, I, 
opened the bootlet up, gave him a piece of aluminium. I said, pal, you put a Conrad through the block. You're going nowhere. <laughs> yeah, what must we do? So I said, all right, closest place we got to go on a, get your car back on a uh, train back to Germany. Yeah, so anyway, I said to Jack, come, let's help this guy. We had to pull the tow rope out the back of the car, towed him to Verona on the highway, doing like 120, 140 on the highway because he was wasting our time. We wanted to enjoy the weekend. <laughs> we got him to the railway station and enjoyed the rest of the weekend. We had a lot of fun together. Uh, also, at, uh, I think you, Joe, you were, uh, when, did, when did stock cars start? You were how old? How old were you, John? I was probably 15. I think 15. And then 16 when you started. Yeah. Joe bought a three-speed uh, Ford console that was on the track that was written off. We went to the scrapyard with his father's uh, Leyland truck, block and tackle, and got another body there, changed everything over. Uh, I also raced the car a few times uh, with Joe. We often got the checkered flag. We were the youngest stock car racers. He was 15, I was 14. And yeah, that was part of our life. I mean, uh, we go back a long way. And uh, I want you guys to enjoy uh, the venue. And then we're gonna bring the new bike up now soon, which we're gonna hand back to Joe in a recon condition. And thanks for being here, Joe. And thank you guys for everything. Thank you.